If you're like me and you sell things online and you want to boost sales, the best thing you could do is increase your customer population, the number of people you can sell this to. And the best way to do that is to offer your product or services globally. I have an online store on BrickLink and I sell internationally and it's drastically helped my sales and increased my revenue and profits. That's the answer to the thumbnail. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. If you already sell internationally or you have no interest whatsoever in doing it, that's okay. At least throw me a like for that uh, quick explanation to the thumbnail, if you will. It helps me out and then you can sign off and go to a better video, I guess. Overall though, I'm going to get right into it and elaborate and talk about everything to deal with international shipments, what you should know, how to get price estimates, how to mail something, how to pack something. I'll even go to talk about BrickLink international shipping methods. If you're a BrickLink seller like me, that'll help you. And lastly, I'll talk about some shipping thoughts about international shipments, things that have helped me, areas where I've had problems in the past, and so forth. Let's get right into it. If you look at lots of corporations such as McDonald's, Walmart, even Lego, they're global. These companies are bringing in literally a buttload of money every year, but it's not just coming from within the United States or one country. Let's look at the numbers. Let's take a quick look at McDonald's, for example. Whether you like them or not, McDonald's brings in over $20 billion annually. That's a huge number. Look at it with all the zeros. Anyway, they are global. And only 36 to 37% of that revenue is within the United States. That means that only, what is it? Where's the number? $7.4 billion out of $20 billion is coming from the United States. The rest of their money is coming in from all other countries around the world. You could look at Walmart, look at the numbers for them. Even look at Lego. Lego didn't even start out in the United States. It started in Denmark and it made its way around Europe. And now we have Lego just about everywhere. And it's amazing. It's a globally known toy that's but it's loved and it's wonderful. When I started my store, I instantly knew, hey, let's try international shipping. It's something new. I'll learn about it and I'll figure it out. Obviously, there's that fear where it's like, wow, I've never sold an international package before or shipped one. What's it going to be like? Think about when you sent your first package out. It was probably like, wow, it's something new. It's different. I, I feel a little weird about it. But after you do a few of them, then it's no problem. It's just, okay, label, slap it on there, tape it up, boom, get it out the door. I saved my very first customs form and I framed it. This was my first international order. It went to Hong Kong and it really took off my store because it, it was a large order. It's $1,400. It was a huge order. I think my biggest order in my store to date, but that order allowed me to then grow my store. I took that money and reinvested it. And if I didn't offer this international shipping method, I might not have sold an order of that size in that time frame or that quickly or overall, you know, it might have been a much smaller order, you know, a couple of hundred dollars here and there. Selling internationally drastically helped me and I think you should do it yourself. Now that you know I'm quite informed in this area of expertise, let's get right into it and create some labels. With international labels, the really only major difference is your customs form. This is an example of an online customs form you'd be filling out when creating a label. It'll ask basic things, you know, what are you sending, the quantity, the price of it, and then your HS code, that's a code that will correspond to whatever piece of merchandise you're sending. I have a particular code that's for Lego or toys and games, and that's the code I use. Overall though, you just need to fill this out and then you're done. The rest of it's quite simple. You put in package parameters. The package parameters are like anything else. You know, the dimensions of it, the weight of it, and that's it. And finally, for this example, I'm using a fake address. These addresses are real locations. That way I can get an accurate price. And that's all you can do if you want to estimate something. In this case, I put a United Kingdom address. And here you can see that when I click accept, all these options come up. And I can see, okay, this is how much it costs for USPS. This is how much it is for UPS and DHL. And that's because I have accounts with those companies linked to my ship station through my PayPal where I receive funds. As you can see, creating a label is quite simple. It just takes a little bit of time to get that first or second label done. And throughout time, it'll be very simple. Just adding documentation of what you have is perfect. Let's look at how do you calculate what something might cost to ship it. Well, the first thing you could do is what I just showed you. You can actually go to your provider that you're creating labels through already and just change some parameters around. You know, if Stacy sends you a payment and her address is somewhere in Kansas, you can just change that and say, okay, we're gonna mail this to Ireland and here are the package parameters and how much will it cost? And it will already have your return address and knows where you're sending it from. You're picking a new location and then it will spit you out a few numbers saying, hey, here are your rates, here's what you could do. If you don't like doing that, another simple way is to just go on to the United States Postal Service calculator and they you can put in a location with a postal code and some package parameters and it will give you values that it will cost. I typically find that the United States Postal Service for international mail leaving the U.S., going to other countries, 
is cheapest up until around three and a half to four pounds. After that, you can then go on the UPS shipping calculator, other shipping calculators, or again, ShipStation or whatever platform you use for label making, and you can find out what it will cost. Now that you know those two important things, the next thing is how do you package these items? Well, I just have a little bit of information. I don't really have examples, but the best thing I find is using a box. You can package it just about the same way you would for any other package going within your country. However, I find boxes are best practice when mailing things internationally, and that is because smaller envelopes, very small packages could get lost or fall between cracks and could also get swiped or disappear if somebody takes it. It rarely happens. However, a box is added security. You can ensure that your item in there is neatly wrapped and packaged and cased in. That way, if it gets thrown around, which it will, your item is fine and won't be damaged. Also, boxes are harder to swipe or take away if somebody was going to steal something. And lastly, with your label, I always put a piece of tape over the barcode on any package. That just ensures that if this package is getting thrown around and the label starts to tear off, hopefully if the label does get torn, that barcode's still there. They could still scan it and know where my package is or where it needs to go. Another thing you could do, which is good practice, print a second label and put it in your box along with the customs forms that are in your box. I Customs forms need to be on the exterior of a box in an envelope like this. They are free. You could get them from the United States Postal Service if you're mailing through them. You could get them from UPS for free if you're mailing through them. And your customs forms should go in there. Things like the invoice of what is included. A paper with the VAT amount if they've already paid their value added taxes. In which case, when I sell something on BrickLink, they will then send me documents and say, download these and put them on your package. Putting them in this envelope is great. And that way, when it goes through customs, they open it up, check it out, and make sure that person doesn't get charged twice and then they send the package to them and everything goes smoothly. And lastly, although those are supposed to be on the exterior of the box, you could also put a second pair of them inside the box as well as another shipping label in case the label gets torn off and then eventually somebody's gonna have to open that package and figure out, okay, where is it going? And then they open it up, see another label in there and send your package out. Last steps at problem prevention, I guess, right? Now that you know all that, for every BrickLink viewer out there, let's get right into BrickLink. I'm going to show you my shipping method for sending things from the United States to Canada. When you're in BrickLink and you toggle over to your store settings, you can then go to your shipping page and see any shipping methods you have. I'm going down to my Canada shipping method. This is through the United States Postal Service. At the top of this shipping method, when I get there, you can see I just give it a name. It's through USPS. I put, please read my store terms. It is enabled, which means it's active. It's automated, which means when they place an order, they will have the option to pay directly. It is international, and then it's based on a weight band. And what that means is that from you know zero to six ounces, it will cost this much. And then when it goes up to the next weight band, it will increase to that price. Finally, I add my order fees. The only thing you really need to be concerned about is that if somebody purchases 12 ounces of parts from you, it'll probably weigh about a pound when you package it, so make sure to account for that. Now that you see my Canada shipping method, here is me creating a brand new method sending to the United Kingdom. Adding a shipping method internationally is very similar to adding one domestically. We'll click add shipping method, we'll give it a name, and then we'll add some remarks. I always type in, you know, check out my store terms. Then we'll make sure it's disabled for the moment, it's automated, it's international. We're going to do this by weight band. And now you're going to use the processes I told you in the beginning of the video to kind of calculate the price ranges for certain weight bands, you know, zero ounces to six ounces and maybe from 6.01 ounces all the way to one pound. Make sure you're accounting for the fact that packaging also has weight. I sell Lego parts, figures, and sets and let's, for example, say somebody orders 12 ounces of parts and sets from me. If it weighs that much, I know that, okay, a box might weigh four ounces. I want to make sure they pay for one pound of shipping instead of 12 ounces. I don't want to lose money. With international shipments, it gets quite precise. From zero to eight ounces is usually a certain amount, and then from eight to eight ounces to 16 is another amount and then every pound matters. Using the techniques I showed you in the beginning of this video, go ahead and calculate the prices to send multiple size packages to whichever region you're trying to do. Write those down and then use those prices to directly reflect how you will modify your shipping method. Overall, if this video is helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe if you wanna see Lego content. There'll be Lego content Tuesdays and Fridays and some of that Lego content might overlap with some of your entrepreneurial uh, ventures or online sales. Thank you. Lego, my James-o.